My name is Dr. Hopkins. Today we're going to talk to you about colonoscopy. It's not necessarily a procedure that everyone likes to have done, but it's a necessary evil. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, in general, it's a very safe procedure. It's helpful to diagnose colon cancer and to remove polyps. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to have you view our animated video, which goes over uh, the details of the procedure. And then after that, we'll go ahead and review multiple things that we typically find when we do the procedure. And then after that, we'll go over the bowel prep, which is um, probably the most difficult part of the procedure itself is the prep prior to the procedure. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started and you can uh, look over this animated video. A colonoscopy is a medical procedure that lets your doctor look inside your colon and rectum for problems such as ulcers, inflammation, bleeding, polyps, and tumors. A colonoscope is the tool used to perform a colonoscopy. It is a thin, flexible tube with a light and video camera on the end. It is inserted through the anus into the rectum and is carefully guided up through the colon, all the way to the cecum. The colonoscope can usually be used to enter the very end of the small bowel, known as the terminal ileum. The front tip of the colonoscope contains a video camera, which sends real-time images to a computer screen so that your doctor can examine the colon. The front tip also has a light, a channel for water irrigation, a channel for air and water, as well as an instrument channel. The irrigation channel is used to flush water or air into the colon to remove debris or stool and see more clearly what the inside of the colon looks like and to check for polyps. Special tools such as tiny forceps or wired loops or snares can be passed through the colonoscope to remove polyps and take samples, called biopsy, of suspicious tissue in order to look for signs of cancer. A colonoscopy usually takes 30 to 60 minutes and is performed in a hospital or clinic by a trained doctor, known as a gastroenterologist. You will be offered a sedative to help you relax during your colonoscopy, and you will be placed on your side for the procedure. Your doctor will carefully insert the colonoscope into your rectum and advance it to the end of your colon, to your cecum. The colonoscope bends, so your doctor can move it around the curves of your colon. Your doctor might gently press on your abdomen during the procedure or ask you to change positions occasionally to help move the scope through the colon. During the entire procedure, a magnified high-definition video from the colonoscope plays on a monitor in real time so your doctor can thoroughly examine the lining of your colon. Video may be recorded and photos are taken as well. A small amount of air may be blown into your colon to help expand the passageway so that your doctor can see better. This can make you feel pressure or mild cramping, but can be eased by taking slow, deep breaths. The colonoscope is then slowly pulled out while your doctor carefully examines the inside of your bowel. If your doctor finds polyps or suspicious areas during the colonoscopy, the polyps will be removed and small tissue samples will be taken to be checked for signs of cancer. Polyps are usually not cancerous, but they can change into cancer, and that is why they need to be removed. Polyps are removed with biopsy tools or wire loops that get passed through the scope into the colon. The most common removal technique is called snare polypectomy, where the polyp is surrounded by a wire loop, and then an electric current in the wire burns off the polyp. The polyp is then pulled through the instrument channel and collected for biopsy. Other methods are available depending on the size and shape of the polyp. Polyps contain no nerves, so you won't feel pain during their removal. After your colonoscopy, you will be taken to rest in a recovery room until the effects of your sedation wear off. You may feel some gas or cramping, but this will quickly pass. Because of the sedation used during the procedure, you will need a family member or a close friend to drive you home. You should take the rest of the day off and not make any major plans for 24 hours. Before you go home, your doctor will share the results of the colonoscopy with you. If a biopsy was sent to the lab, it may take a few days or longer to receive the results. Depending on the number and size of polyps found, as well as how clean your colon looks, based on the quality of your bowel prep cleanout, 
Your doctor will recommend when your next colonoscopy should be done. Your doctor will also provide instructions on the follow-up care required at home and how to recognize complications in case they occur. Colonoscopy is generally a safe procedure and complications are rare. If a polyp was removed or a biopsy was performed during your colonoscopy, there is a very small risk that you may have small amounts of blood in your stool for a few days afterwards. However, if you experience severe abdominal pain, fever, dizziness, or continued heavy bleeding from your anus, call your doctor right away. You should always discuss any questions or concerns you have about your colonoscopy procedure, results, and post-procedure with your doctor. Your doctor is there to help you through the process and answer any questions you may have. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Um, this is a picture of a normal colon, okay? Um, basically, we don't see any polyps or any abnormalities in this exam. Um, and hopefully that's all we'll find in your colonoscopy. Okay, and there's multiple little folds in the colon and uh, again, you're sedated throughout the whole procedure. So it's really pretty comfortable. The next uh, finding that we sometimes see is this condition we call diverticulosis. Now it's important to remember that diverticulosis is when you basically have outpouchings of the colon um, and, uh, and this is what they look like in colon uh, during the colonoscopy procedure. Um, if those pouches get stuck, get, if stool gets stuck inside those pouches, then they can, that can cause inflammation, and that's, that's what we call diverticulitis. So if it's inflamed, it's called diverticulitis. If you just have the pockets themselves without inflammation, then that's called diverticulosis. And many people have this. There's some things you can do with your diet with regards to increasing the fiber in your diet and switching to a whole food plant-based diet, which I always recommend for your general health as well as for this condition to help minimize the risk of developing problems with diverticulosis, which could potentially lead to diverticulitis. So let's talk about you know, the procedure. It's a fairly safe procedure, really, um, but there are some complications that can occur. The, the most significant one that we worry about the most is always perforation. You know, it is an invasive procedure. We are looking. There's a possibility that you could get a perforation. It's about two to six out of every thousand patients have this complication. I'm a surgeon, so I can fix that complication, but it's, it's very rare. Um, if you do have pain after the procedure, especially if it's severe pain, you need to call me right away so we can uh, look, look, look into that situation and get it fixed. It's not a big deal. It's, it typically requires surgery, but delaying uh, coming back in and, delay, and, and not calling me is, is, is a big risk. So bleeding can occur about one out of every thousand in patients that have a biopsy and I'm sorry, patients that do not have a biopsy, and the, the risk of bleeding in patients that have a biopsy is more around the line of 1% to 2%. There's a condition called post-polypectomy syndrome where you, it's, kind of like, it's kind of like when we remove a polyp, it kind of causes a burn phenomena to the vein, to the, to the colon, um, and uh, that occurs about 0.04 to about 0.5% of the time, um, and that's uh, if you have pain after a colonoscopy, it's, you need to call me, essentially. Spleen rupture is extremely rare. Um, it's been reported in the literature. I've never seen a case, but it's been reported to happen about 18 times. So it's un uncommon to rupture the spleen, but the spleen is kind of attached to the colon. So I mentioned that as a potential risk, although it's extremely uncommon. Um, so in summary, colonoscopy is in generally, generally a very safe procedure with few complications, as we just talked about. Um, it's, it's very helpful, however, to have a colonoscopy because we can actually diagnose um, colon diseases and, and, and the main one being colon cancer because colon cancer is a slow-growing cancer and if you pick up these polyps early, you can remove those polyps and prevent them from growing into a malignant cancer, which we really, that's, that's really the benefit. Um, and as we mentioned, it, we remove polyps and that helps prevent colon cancer. So it's, uh, it's, it's usually not too painful. Um, we use intravenous sedation um, and that makes it comfortable. There's a chance you might feel a little bit of discomfort and if you do, we just give you a little bit more sedation. Um, uh, and we do this with uh, pretty strong sed sedative medications and that makes it comfortable typically for the patient. Um, now, the bowel prep, it's the worst, it is definitely the worst part of the procedure, but it's um, really, really critical that your colon be clean because otherwise there's no reason to do the procedure because if you're not clean, we can't, I can't see what, if there's a bunch of stool in your colon, I can't see what I need to see. And then we have to just repeat the whole thing. So really you want to um, follow the, the instructions with regards to your bowel prep and we'll go over that um, 
in just a, in, in just a second. Okay, so here's some instructions with regards to the procedure, some just kind of housekeeping issues. You want to make sure you, bring, you have a driver to drive you home, okay, because you're, you'll be sedated, so you can't drive on your own. Um, and you cannot take a taxi, okay, that, that's basically not allowed. Um, so you have to have a driver. We want you to stop non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications about seven days before the procedure. Um, and that includes things like uh, aspirin, Motrin, ibuprofen, Advil, fish oils, omega-3 fatty acids. You want to stop those about seven days prior to the procedure. Blood thinning medications. If you're taking any other blood thinning medications like Coumadin, Xeralto, Eliquis, these things, we need to discuss that with you. I need to discuss that with you, so make sure that I know that you're taking those so that we can discuss if or when you should stop those prior to your colonoscopy. And it depends on the particular situation as to why you're on those medications as to whether we should stop those prior to your procedure. So make sure I know about that. Um, and then um, you want to check in to the facility 45 minutes before your scheduled start time for your procedure. And that gives the nurse time to start your IV and do all the paperwork and that sort of thing. Okay, so next we're going to go over with you uh, the details of the prep. Okay, so we're going to go over exactly how to do the soup prep to make sure your colon is really clean. And that's really important because if you're not clean, then we unfortunately have to repeat the whole procedure. So this is the prep. This is called soup prep, okay? And it comes in a box after you get your prescription. And inside the box, there's instructions which are helpful, okay? There is a glass and there's two of these bottles, okay? I only have one here today because we wanted to test out the flavor. It's kind of salty and sweet combined. It's kind of a weird flavor, but it's not that bad. So what you do, is on the morning, on the day before your procedure, you want to start drinking liquids. And then we're just talking clear liquids, okay? Just clear liquids. So for example, if your procedure is on a Tuesday, you want to start drinking your liquids on the morning uh, that, that day before, which is Monday. So Monday morning you wake up, you just drink liquids all day. You don't drink anything but liquids until after your procedure. So liquids, we have an approved list of liquids, okay? So it's like water, um, strained fruit juices, um, uh, coffee or tea without creamer, uh, let's see, chicken broth without any chicken in it, obviously. Uh, gelatin desserts would be considered a, a clear liquid, but, but no um, fruit or topping, okay, in the, in the gelatin dessert. Uh, nothing red or purple, no liquid that has any red or purple because we don't want it to look like blood. Okay, so it's important that you start your liquids on that on the on the day before, the morning of the, the morning prior to the procedure, and you keep drinking those until after the procedure. Then you start your prep, which is the soup prep. You do your your two doses. One is on the the evening before the procedure, and one is on the morning of the procedure. The first dose um, is done about 5 p.m. Uh, prior uh, on the day prior to the procedure, and basically what you do is you you open up this bottle and you um, you pour it in the glass, and then you top it off with uh, any kind of clear liquid. Again, my preference is Gatorade, but you can also use um, water is fine. Uh, it sometimes helps to chill it beforehand. So you fill it up so it tops off right here at the very top mark, okay? And then, and then you drink it, okay? So you drink it down, and after, you've, after you do that, then over the next hour, you drink two more glasses of any clear liquid over the next hour. Okay, and that's at 5 p.m. You do the exact same thing on the morning of your procedure. The time to which you do the second dose on the morning of the procedure will depend on when your procedure is actually scheduled. Okay, but in general, um, you do not want to drink any liquids three hours prior to your scheduled time start, start time of your procedure. Okay, the reason that you don't we don't want you to drink three hours before as we don't, we don't want to, your stomach to be full of liquids that you might aspirate during the procedure. So we wanna give it some time to go through. So sometimes that means, depending on when you start, sometimes that means you have to get up pretty early in the morning to do your second dose. And, uh, but if you have any questions, ask us uh, when you come in for your appointment. And thank you, I hope that makes it clear. <music>